Welcome, welcome. How you guys doing today? It is Keep Your Money Monday. Keep Your Money Monday. And I'm so happy that you guys are here. You see what we got going on here? Cash flow. You guys ever played cash flow? Well, if you haven't, I'm getting ready to break it down for you. So, who am I? Sensei Sabira. Turn this down just a little bit. Hello, who just, whoever just joined me? Ah, oh, a couple of y'all in here. Great. So I want to say hello, first of all. Glad that you're here. You don't ever want to miss a Monday. Hey, David, you do not ever, ever, ever want to miss a Monday here at the Midday Pick Me Up. So I am going over how to keep your money on Mondays. At the very least, that's what I'm doing on Mondays. And we're going to do that using the cash flow game because it is a really fun, really simple. Hey, Casey, what's happening? Hey, Patricia, you guys do me a favor real quick. Share this out because we're going to have some good stuff on here today. Um, so anyway, if you haven't been here before or if it's been a while, just want to remind you, first of all, if you're here on the replay, thank you for coming, uh, stopping by and watching. Um, Sensei Sabir and I'm here Monday through Friday every single week to um, share with you some insights that I've had. Uh, some tools that I'm using to recreate my life uh, after breast cancer. So I wrote a book, so I'm an author, I'm a speaker, I'm a teacher, I'm a healer, I'm all kinds of things. But the reason I'm here is to support you if you are any of those things or even think you are one of those things. If you have a purpose, a passion, and you know that your reason for being on the planet is to bring love, to bring light through your business, right? But you probably have been told you can't do that with your business. You can't make a living doing those things. And I'm here to tell you that that is absolutely true. But more than to tell you, I'm going to show you. So you guys might have heard that saying, I can show you better than I can tell you. So that's what we're going to do. So guys, if you haven't yet, do me a favor, share this out. Because I am bringing some good, absolutely good nuggets to you today. So... How was everybody's weekend? How was everybody's weekend? Hey, Tamika is here. We got Atlanta in the house. We got Baltimore. Um, we're gonna wait just a few more minutes. We're gonna go over this cash flow game, guys, and I'm gonna actually um, teach you some principles that this game teaches. That are, you know, I'm I'm gonna be bringing this to you guys every Monday, trying to break it down in a way that is palatable, easily to understand, and then easy for you to actually use it in your life, right? Whether you come and play cash flow with us or not. Hey, Kim, how are you? Whether you come and play cash flow with us or not. Uh, by the way, we're playing this uh, Saturday in um, Fort Washington, Maryland. If you are in the D.C., Virginia, um, Maryland area at all, we'll be playing cash flow. Uh, in Fort Washington at the Curves. I believe there's only one Curves in all of Fort Washington, and that's where we'll be. Um, we do have an event, so a uh, Facebook event, so I'll go ahead and make sure that I start sending out those invites. If And if you can't make it, you know, send somebody you know. But guys, you want to pay attention to what I'm getting ready to bring today. You want to pay attention. So let's let's get going. Let's get going. Again, has anybody ever played Cash Flow? Anybody in here ever played cash flow? Tell me if you have ever played cash flow. Do you even know what this game is? Do you know why I believe every household should have this game? Look, if you got Taboo, Twister, um, um, I don't even know. Whatever other board games you might have. If you have board games in your house. Hey, Wally Da, thank you for sharing. If you like board games, but you really want to take, you know, Play a board game that's going to change your life. Invest in cash flow. Now, is it going to cost you 20 bucks at Walmart like the other ones? No, it's not. Okay? This is a real investment. Why? This little game can change your life. I'm telling you, it, it has been instrumental in shaping and changing my thought process around money and how I make money move on my behalf. Hear how I say that. Yes, you love board games, Alethea. Ah, lovely. I love Alethea. 
All right, so here we go. Again, and Mike, you got kids. You want to make sure you get cash flow. If you're buying them Christmas gifts and birthday gifts and all that, guys, I'm going to highly recommend that you get cash flow in your house and you begin playing cash flow with your children, with your spouse, uh, with your church, with your whatever group of people. If, if you are in a position of leadership, if you are in a position of, of trying to help people elevate their lives, this is the one area that so many people contact me because they're hurting. Do you realize you can break out this board game and literally start changing people's lives? So here's what I want to do. I want to talk about some of the pieces on the game and, and how this shows up in real life. Hey, Wellesley, well, how this shows up in real life, okay? Um, again, I'm going to say again, I'm going to say throughout today's, this is a class today, guys. This is a class. I want you to put your student mindset on, grab a pen, go out and share this with people right now because I'm getting ready to teach. I, and hopefully it inspires, but that's not my objective today. My objective on Monday is to teach you, to teach. Okay, so we go through 12 years of school, we come out and we decide, okay, well, I, I need a job. I need to, to some way to bring in cash flow, right? We haven't, we're so in the middle of this thing about I need to make money and nobody's probably talked to us about how this money system, how this thing works. Hey, Tanya. Yes, ta cash flow. Here we go. Every Monday. Every Monday, Tanya, I'm going to be breaking down this game. And to, to show you, guys, because this is not a game. This is serious, but it's fun. Okay? So, some of us say, okay, I'm going to go to college. Right? Cash flow mimics life. So, what do you get? You get a job description. You get a job. Okay, this person clearly went to college, got an MD, and uh, they also have a really good cash flow. Their cash flow is $3,500 a month. That's awesome. Well, their liabilities is, is pretty up there as well. So their expenses are $13,000 a month. Their cash flow is $3,500 a month. But their expenses, guys, $96 hundred dollars a month so we think oh I'm making so much money I make a lot of money look when a doctor has a kid it costs so much more for that doctor to have a child that doctor they're gonna probably send it to private school and do all these lovely things right so we're talking about a six hundred and fifty dollar a month bill just for your kid if you're a doctor right you got a big fancy house you probably live in a big fancy neighborhood and you got to let people know by all your doodads and things that you buy, you know, who you are, that you went to school and you're so high and mighty. And I'm grateful for all the doctors. Y'all, you know, helped to save my life. I'm grateful. But I'm talking about on a financial side now. Guys, if ever I'm saying anything that you like, do me a favor and share this out. Okay. Give me some thumbs up and let me know if I'm making sense. And then, you know, you got that kid that was in your class that, you know, maybe kind of kind of messed around in school and didn't decide, you know, they didn't want to go to college maybe. It's like, I'm not sure what I want to do. I want to put on my backpack and, you know, go to Ghana or something. I don't know. I don't know what I want to do. So they get a little part-time job, this little thing doing, you know, I, I'll be a janitor. Let's me stay flexible. I can go, go and do what I want to do. And so we judge the janitor, right? We judge the janitor, hang on. We judge the janitor and we're like, oh, well, they don't have any education, right? Their expenses is $950 a month. Their cash flow is only $650 a month. So they're, you know, they're they're in trouble. Um, but their, sa their salary is $1,600. Their expenses is $950 and their cash flow is $650. So they're not doing fabulously, obviously. But here's what I want you guys to know. Hey. Hey, Rita, hey, here's what I want you to know. It's not what you make. It's not whether you're a doctor or a janitor. That is irrelevant. That is actually a distraction, right? 
This thing called a money system has us so focused on these titles and how much income you make when that's not the point. The point is, of the cash flow that comes into me, how much of that cash flow do I keep? How much of that cash flow every month do I keep? So I'm going to ask you, of your cash flow that you get every month, how much do you keep? This is Keep Your Money Monday. I want to show you how to keep your money. But before I show you how to keep it, I'm going to show you some other things. So there's mindset, right? We need to know... First of all, do you, every month, do you keep a financial statement? Do you even know what a financial statement is? Do you have a track that you're running on that you know, what do I have coming in? What do I have going out? What is the difference? And what am I doing with that money? How much of it am I keeping? You need to have a financial statement. This is, guys, I use this literally when I was 20. Nobody taught me about financial income statements, cash flow, how to, what is an asset. Nobody taught me in my life. My parents didn't have that language. So I read Robert Kiyosaki and got it. So get it out of your head, Tanya. Put it on paper. Get, get, a, get a software something. You've got to see. And this is the, the importance about this game, guys, because it allows you to actually see what's going on. Hey, Tay. All right, so, guys, we're going to get a financial statement. If you don't know how to, how to write one up and, and, and operate within one, get the cash flow game. I'm making no money by this. Believe you me, Robert Kiyosaki is giving me no money. I just really believe in this game. This will teach you how to keep a balance statement, an income and profit and loss statement for yourself. Because believe it or not, it's you Inc. It's Tay Inc. It's Betty Jean Inc. It's Subira Inc. And if we don't have that in our mind, I'm going to show you what happens. So they say, oh, well, we don't know the rules. Let me tell you what. I took Robert Kiyosaki's and I actually broke the rules and put it in my own little binder so that I could teach myself how does money operate? How does this thing work? Why can't I get this, my mind around this? Just because my parents didn't teach me in school, did, school's not designed mm -hmm. to teach you what this is going to teach you. That's not the function of school. School is to have you learn how to operate within their system so that you go to a job. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with a job. I just need you to understand the function of particular things. Once you understand the agendas and the functions of particular things, you can make choices. But until you do, you don't, you are not at choice. I'm sorry. You're being moved. So I'm supporting you in making choices by understanding the game. The game. So I don't know if you guys can see here. I think you can. There are actually two circles. There are two circles at play here. There is one that is really tight, really small. This is the one that most of us are in. We call it the rat race. You just go around and around and around. You get income comes in, income goes out. You're left with a little bit at the end of the month. And if you are, you know, fortunate to have a good job, then you go and you buy it. You go into the market, okay? All these cars literally mimic what goes on in the world. So you go to the market and you can buy some things. Typically, though, what we do, is we buy doodads. Let's let's run through this real quick because this one is a fun one. All right, so we go buy doodads because you know we have money or we have the illusion of money, and the illusion of money is credit. 
I know I just walked down somebody's street. I'll say that again. The illusion of money is credit. Credit is not money. It doesn't mean that you're wealthy because you can happen to go out and pull out a card and push off a payment three months, six months, nine months, a year down the road. You still have to eventually pay. So let's say you are the doctor. We're dealing with the doctor right now. And the doctor says, well, you know what? I want to take my family to New York City or I want to, you know, take a date up to Broadway. We want to go to Broadway and see a show. This card says $120. We know it's going to cost more than $120, but we're going to deal with what Robert Kiyosaki put on here in 1996. Okay. So we go to Broadway. It's 120 bucks. And we get home and it's the weekend and we want some coffee and the coffee machine that we're working with, we don't like it so much. So we go to Costco and on sale we get a cappuccino machine because we need frothy coffee, coffee that does all this fancy things. And we don't want to go to Starbucks, right? Because that costs too much. So we go and we buy a $150 coffee maker that does fancy, fancy coffee. A couple months later, it's our anniversary. And... We got to buy something good for our anniversary, right? So we spend 200 bucks on our anniversary. And then dang it, you know what? I work really, really hard. I work hard all week. So now we go on a shopping spree. That's 350 bucks. I don't know. Is this ringing a bell for anybody? You guys tell me something. Is this ringing a bell for anybody? The, 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 the items that we're buying here might not be the same, but are you feeling me what I'm saying? Are you feeling what I'm saying? Is it making sense? Let me know. And then at the end of the year, you're like, you know what? I deserve a vacation. I'm going to take my kids, my spouse. We're going on a vacation. That's roughly $2,000. So in the matter of that year, you spent $2,800. Let's just round it to $2,800. $2,800 on doodads. Now I'm not saying don't go have fun. What I'm saying is, are you mindful? What I'm saying is, yes, girl, ring-a-ling-a-ling. -a -ling. What I'm saying is, since most of the people, some of the people who are on here with me every day are entrepreneurs or want to be entrepreneurs, what I want to know is, have you set your business up in such a way that you can write off a $2,000 vacation, that you can write off an anniversary gift, that you can write off a shopping spree, that you can write off a coffee maker. If you haven't done that, you're operating in this very tight space. Look at how tight this circle is, guys. It's tight like this for a reason. Most people who are in the rat race feel tight, constricted. They're just going around and around in a circle, hope, waiting for another payday. Waiting for another pay, waiting for an opportunity to relieve some financial pressure emotionally by going out and buying a doodad and telling themselves, I deserve this. Here's what I want to ask you. Do you deserve to get out of the rat race? There, It is not hard, but what it does take is discipline and focus and commitment to your family, to yourself. Would it be so hard to say, you know what, for three to five years, instead of me buying doodads, I'm going to figure out how in the world can I take what would be a doodad and convert it into a business expense? Or if you're not an entrepreneur, which is cool, maybe I'm just going to plan out my purchases more so that I am always, no matter what, doing what you have to do to get out of this place. That is what I want to show you guys. Doing what you have to do to get out of here means you must pay yourself first. There, I'm sorry, there is no other way. Because this is a closed system. There is no way out of this unless you begin taking a little bit for yourself and setting it to the side in the proper vehicle. What does that vehicle look like?
That is called conversion. You want to convert cash, which is designed to flow. You want to convert cash. You want to make change so that you can make change in your life. So you, what you do on this board game, you pick up big deals or small deals, right? So let's just say, and people say, I can't do a big deal. Apartment house for sale. Well, you know, and there's a lot you got to know to buy an apartment house. So let's put that to the side for a minute. The reality is, look, I got maybe a hundred to three to four hundred, five hundred dollars if I'm lucky a month left over. That was the doctor, right? I don't have that much money to be looking at big deals, but I can look at a small deal. Hey, Nancy, what's up, queen? I can look at a small deal. So let's see, what do they have on here? I pulled these two out because these two are things you can do to get yourself out of the rat race. Number one, it's what I've been talking about for the last 10 minutes. Buy, start a company part-time. So here, check this out. I'm gonna read to you what Robert Kiyosaki says. I'm of that age, so I have to take my glasses off when I read. Okay, this is what he says. And what I'm going to read to you, this is why most people don't do this. Listen. Develop an interesting idea for a software program. And you can put anything in there. Developing an interesting idea for a book. Developing an interesting idea for, you know, a pillow. I don't care. Jewelry. Whatever. So you start a company produce to produce and sell it. No profits during startup, long hours, no extra pay. Are there any entrepreneurs on here that feel me right now? Yeah, Rolita, right? It says 0% return on investment immediately, or it may sell for question mark. You don't know, if anything. So what is this telling you? There's a risk. You might end up spending, you know, a lot of time and not making any money. And it's going to cost you some money to start a business. Absolutely. But here's what an entrepreneur does. An entrepreneur says, but what if it works? What if I align myself with people and what if it works? What if I can come up with an idea that people would like and it works? Other people do it. Why not me? You guys start valuing your ideas. If I can write a book and sell it, that's like print money. You guys realize I have the ability to print money because I wrote a book. Do you realize that I always walk with two or three books and I tell people all the ways I'm an author. Oh my gosh, really? Would you sign it? Absolutely. I'm happy to sign it and sell it to them because I know that what I've written in the book is a value. So when you bring value, people will exchange they will change, they will convert this idea that I had of a book. They will give me cash. Y'all stay with me. I hope you're taking notes or come back and study this. Right? So here, let's, let's break it down. All right. Here's my business idea. Book. I spent nine months. I was not getting paid. I didn't know if anybody would like it. I didn't know it cost me money to make this book. I had to pay editors. I had to pay designers, graphic designers. I had to pay to Amazon and aunt. I had to pay up front. But I did this thing one time. Let's just round it and say it took me 12 months. Now, on demand. This becomes this. Y'all with me? I figured out, okay. Let's say this cost me, let's say this cost me $3,000. Once I sell $3,000 worth of books, I've made my money back and then we're into what's called infinity cash. Infinity cash. I can sell this for the rest of my life. I can design workshops around it. I can do retreats around it. I can go and speak and get paid to speak because of it. Do you guys hear what I'm saying? You don't have to go do something like, oh, uh, I don't know. Does, uh, it ain't, it ain't, a, it ain't, it's not something. 
So here's what I do. I'm taking you guys through my system of getting out of this tight place, this rat race. I am still crawling out of the devastation that I talk about in chapter 7, the financial devastation of breast cancer. So I sell my books. Jay-Z, they sold music. What can you create? You have got to become a creator or else you're just a producer. You're in here. I mean, you've got to become a creator or else you're just a consumer. You're in here buying dudes all day, all year long. Your cash is going into other people's pockets. You've got to figure out a way to make this cash stop at you. Am I making sense? Somebody better roar if I'm making sense. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, Tanya. This is, when they say, oh, counterfeit, it, I can print money on demand because I took a year and wrote a book, guys. That's freaking deep. Then you take some of this, which you get paid for the effort that I put in. Somebody pays me. Thank you. Yes. And then what do I do? I go and I make an exchange. Good, saying I'm glad I'm making sense. Then I go and I make an exchange. I take some of this and I peel it off and I get myself some gold. Okay? Listen, guys. This is designed to move. This is designed to circulate. This is why they call this currency. This is going to go around this board. And it's going to continue to go around. Continue to exchange hands in the marketplace at your grocer, at the car wash, at your dry cleaner. If you're going to pay your babysitter, do you understand? All it does is move in a circle. And whoever has it at tax time pays the tax. So, but people who have money, they say, you know what? I'm going to peel off a little bit. Okay, this is circulating, but I'm going to peel this off. And I'm going to convert it into something that now is going to stand still. While this continues to move, I hold on to this. I keep my money. This is real money. This is not. This moves. And it kicks off more cash. And the cash flows. And as the cash is flowing, I dip my hand in and I get myself some gold every month. Boom. Boom. And I just put it away. People say, well, what do you do with it? Oh, my God. You guys, you keep your money. As one of my uh, live stream mentors, Michael Delco, says, you keep your money. But got to understand that this is not money. This is not designed to stand still. And if you guys are, are keeping this, not converting it to this, you will remain here going in a circle staying in the rat race i don't care if you start a business if you don't ever convert this to this if i had written this book and got cash and just just keep getting cash and not ever converting diverting making change you see what i'm saying change i'm making change change you you guys Y'all know I, I got to get metaphysical here. I have to make change, change my life, change my thoughts, change. This is one level of consciousness. This is another level of consciousness. This is quite another, my dear. Quite another. This can never be destroyed. I can burn it. I, not burn it. I can melt it. This will burn. This is simply meant to go around the board. So let me stop here. I know I'm giving y'all a lot. Come back and watch this. I'm telling you. Here we go. Let's go back in. All right. So we're in. We said, okay, you know what? Do you know what Robert Kiyosaki has in here? Rare gold coin. Okay, so, and do you know that you can actually start a business that is rare, that is gold? Part of my business is gold. I help people open up free gold savings accounts. I get, this company pays me to help my clients 
save. I don't even have to sell it. All I have to do is help you save it. And I get paid. And I take a little bit what they pay me and I convert it into gold. Okay? This is another stream of income. I get paid. I take a little bit of what you pay me. I convert it into gold. How many income streams do you have? Y'all quiet. <laughs> if you have only one and then you're not pulling off a little bit, you will never get out of the rat race. It is designed that way. Look at the board game, y'all. It's a closed circle. It is not designed for you to... We'll talk about this larger one next Monday, maybe. But listen, rare gold coin. You spot an unusual uh, gold coin in mint condition at a swap meet. The seller is uh, asking $500. Use this or sell it yourself. Immediate ROI is zero. It may sell for zero to $4,000. And here's what I can tell you about gold. Gold, for the last five, 6,000 years, historically over time has done nothing but gone up. I'm not talking about investing in gold and, and, and trying to make a quick buck on gold. I'm talking about people who have... Had Gold in the possession that have held on to it and nothing but gone up. So, what happens in the market? A collector wants a gold coin. Y'all, this is real life. And they're willing to pay for it. They pay $4,000 for something that cost you $500. Hello. Hello. Are y'all with me? Are y'all with me? Are y'all with me? I know I broke down a lot today, but this is Keep Your Money Monday. And I'm here to support you in keeping your money. Okay? People are like, well, but Sabira, if I take this dollar and I convert it over to gold, then what, what do I do with the gold? You keep the gold. You keep the gold. Empires keep gold. We sitting here watching empire and nobody's building their own. I'm on here every Monday to tell you how to keep your money, how to build your own empire. And it begins with this little game called cash flow and shifting some habits that you have had, that you have developed, that unfortunately the system has supported us in developing this very tight rat race here. The only way you get out of the rat race is that you have to acquire enough assets that the cash flow exceeds your expenses. I'm going to say that again. The only way out of this rat race, the only way out is that you create, you create cash flow um, streams of income. You create streams of income where the cash flow exceeds your monthly expenses. So you create Streams of income, multiple streams of income. You can write a book, you can become a speaker, you can make jewelry for people, you can be, I don't care what you do. The idea is you've got to take a little bit of what you do. The cash, while it's flowing, this is a river, it's flowing. You need to dip your head in, take a little bit out, and convert it into gold. And then you keep your gold. You keep your money. Thank you guys for sharing this out. Thank you guys for sharing this out. Listen, this is what I do. This uh, Saturday at um, the Curves in Fort Washington, Maryland, we are going to be doing a mini workshop. So come out. It's absolutely free. We'll have some little finger food, some music. But I'm going to be teaching 
I'm teaching. This is not, this is a game or this is a lot of fun, but it is not a game. So if you have children, again, I'm highly recommending this year instead of a birthday party, whatever, Christmas gift, get the cash flow game in your house and start to play it at least once a month, at least once a month. And then if you are interested in knowing how do you get your own free gold account, contact me so that I can help you set up your own money in your house so that you can do what I just spent the last half hour explaining. Did I make sense, guys? I'm going to have some of my little green shake here. Did I make sense? Hey. <laughs> Woo, y'all going to Ghana in less than two weeks. Hello. How do you, how do you come up against breast cancer and five years later end in Ghana when you haven't actually worked a real job. How do you do that? How do you do that? <laughs> ah, Because I create multiple streams of income. How do I do that? I bring value to the marketplace every single day based on just who I am and what I like. I like this. I like this game. It's fun. It allows me to teach. I like gold. I like showing people uh, how to take and, and actually get gold and keep it. Okay. The idea is not you get it and then go convert it. You keep it. Once you make that conversion, you keep it for generations. You keep it. We get out of debt. We'll talk about that next. We'll talk about the debt piece, but guys, I'm having fun. I want you to be having fun in your life. I want you to creatively get yourself out of this cycle that just seems to never end. It's like this guaranteed 40 years. And if you're doing something you love, awesome. But most people I talk to want to be doing either what they love and something else or something else entirely. And so I'm showing you the steps that are required. This is the price that you must pay. You must become financially literate, and then you must adapt, improvise, change your behaviors around money. And you've got to heal your relationship. Most of us don't even have a relationship with money. Let's keep it real. We have a relationship with cash, and we're calling it money. So let's understand that's where the financial literacy piece comes in, and then begin to de develop a relationship with money and a separate relationship with cash flow. These are two different tools designed to do two different things. We've got this trying to do the work of this and it's not designed for that, which is why you can't ever get out of the rat race. Okay. All right, guys, that's what I have for you today. Yes. Yes. Tanya, I leave on, um, March 9th. Check this out, you guys. How awesome is this? My birthday is March 17th. And I return on March 25th. And this is the last year of breast cancer treatment for me. How awesome is that? How awesome is that that I get to go to Ghana in the last year of my breast cancer treatment and I get to be there on my birthday? Like, I don't even know how it gets better than that. And also, I want to thank some people that are on here that have been so instrumental, whether it's through prayers. Some people have made love offerings to me, which I am still accepting. Thank you very much. Um, they've purchased books from me. They've got me speaking gigs. I want to say thank you that I would not be going to Ghana without your support. And I promise you that when I come back, I'm going to come back with even more verve, vigor, and gusto than when I left. I guarantee you that. Okay, I'm going to be, I'm going to come back from Ghana because when I'm there, part of the reason I'm going is to study more, to get deeper into my spiritual practices, my training. And so that when I come back, those people who are working with me, trust and believe me when I tell you, trust and believe me when I tell you the life coach that I will be when I return from Ghana, the spiritual entrepreneur that I will be when I return.
from Ghana. So, so different. So, um, if you'd like to uh, open your free gold account before I take off for Ghana, please send me a personal message. Um, everybody, if you haven't yet, go over and like Sensei Subira, which is my business page. Like I said, when I come back from Ghana, I'm going to be uh, broadcasting from that page more and more. Um, yes. Thank you, Tanya. I love you. And Sonia. Oh, your sister's on here. Antoinette. All right, guys. I was on here a very long time today, which, you know, wasn't what I thought I was going to do. But you know how it goes when it gets good. We just don't want it to end. So does anybody have any questions? Any questions about the stuff I shared? Because I know it was a lot. Any, any questions? Yes, 18 days until our birthday, Mike. I got my birthday twin on here, Mike, who I went to high school with. I just love him. He has been like, I think, Mike, you were like one of the first people last year. And you've been here like almost every single day. I love you, birthday twin. Um, yeah, but I must admit that after listening to you today, I didn't change my actions in this manner. Thank you. A oh, Great, Sharice. Good, good, good. Give me a call, Sharice. Give me a call, Okay. Um, look at Rosa. Rosa said, uh, oh God, it's moving too fast. I can't read it, but I think it, okay, okay Ghana. Rosa is saying she went to Ghana as well in 2000 and celebrated her birthday on the beaches of Ghana in 2000. Okay. Yes. Hey, Antoinette. So yeah, guys, I'm, I'm so grateful, so thankful. And, um, you know, if you hang out with me for another year or two, I'm telling you, Things are going to be very, very different. Uh, I'm going to be very, very, very different. Nothing, everything moves. Cash, it, it, everything moves, transforms, grows. And you're going to see, because I'm, I'm going to continue to share with you what I'm doing uh, with regard to financial literacy, with regard to gold, with regard to creating other streams of income that are resonant with who I am. Doing things that I love. I love to travel. You guys are going to see me getting paid to travel. You're going to see me getting paid. I get paid to save in gold. I get paid to teach financial literacy. I get paid to write. I get paid. I'm not doing anything I don't like to do. I can't. Fighting breast cancer was enough of that. Today, I refuse to do anything that I don't enjoy. So, and I know that my story will support me. So your story will support you. The things you love will support you. You have just got to set your life up in such a way that you, um, you sit, make a system so that it can support you. You've got to create an infrastructure in your life. This is one place to begin. Okay. All right, guys, we're going to go out of here on some music. Create a beautiful day. Antoinette, girl, I ain't heard from you in a minute. Oh, yes, Rosa. All right, guys, I love you. I'll be back tomorrow. Do me a favor. Go out and uh, tell another person about this. Bring two and tell them I'm, I'm, I'm bringing it. We're not playing in 2017, guys. I'm not playing in 2017, although we are going to have fun. And we're going to travel. All right. Hey, also, if you guys don't have what WhatsApp, I just learned about this thing. WhatsApp, that's how I'm going to be able to stay in touch with people once I'm in Ghana. I won't be able to do it with Facebook. So if you want me to stay in touch with you, you need to get WhatsApp. And that way we can connect on WhatsApp and I can communicate with you for free over there. I think I can get a local phone and then I can... I can chat or whatever. I don't know. We're going to figure it out, y'all. But I'm going to stay in touch and I'm going to have a lot of pictures and all that good stuff. So if you have WhatsApp, connect with me. If you don't have WhatsApp and you want to be connected with me while I'm in Ghana, go get WhatsApp and um, we're getting ready to go do this thing. All right. I love y'all. Peace and I'll see you tomorrow. Hey, Rhonda. What's up, sis? Love y'all. Bye-bye. Thank you, Patricia. I love you.